Hello once again class and welcome to another mock lecture. Today we're going to be tackling ratios and proportions and we're going to start it off here with just the definition of a ratio, which is a comparison between two quantities, we're going to call them A and B, that are written either as a fraction, like A over B, or in ratio notation, A to B, which is how you'd read this thing, A to B. So for an example, let's say you have the ratio 1 over 2. You could write this as 1 over 2, or you could write it as 1 to 2. If you want an example of a 1 to 2 ratio, let's say that you have two girls for every one boy, right? So there's a ratio of boys to girls in a 1 to 2 ratio is how we would say that. And so pictorially, you know, over here, we have one boy and two girls. All right, and so from this ratio, there's a couple things that, that we can get from, this, uh, from the way that this is written. The first is that we could say something like there's half as many boys as there are girls, right? Because the ratio for boys to girls is one to two. It is literally one half if you write it as a fraction. You could also flip the ratio. So the way that I'm kind of thinking about this one is a two to one ratio, but now it's two girls to one boy. So it, there's twice as many girls as boys. That's another thing that we can get from the way that this ratio is written. The third thing that we can get is the fact that there are a total of three people in this group. In a total of three people, there's one boy and two girls. So if you add the two parts of the ratio together, you're getting what I'm going to call the whole or the total amount, you know, that's in that particular group. So ratios in this light also give us information on how many things that we have uh, in totality. And the way that you do that is you just add A and B together. So total number of things represented in ratio is simply A plus B. And then um, the last thing that I'll say about ratios for now is that ratios are scalable. So let's say here we have five boys and 10 girls, then the ratio that we're setting up is five to 10, right? Or five over 10. But notice that that can be reduced to the same ratio that we were just looking at, one over two. We could say the same thing about both of these ratios. They, there are half as many boys as there are girls. And because we can say this statement for both this ratio and this ratio, we know they have to be equal. If we wanted to, you could even divide them and, and get the decimal, right? 5 over 10 and 1 half reduces to 0.5. Again, because they're reducing to the same thing, we know that these ratios are exactly the same. And anything that reduces to 0.5 would also be the same ratio as 1 to 2. So like 75 to 150. These are all the same ratio. We're just scaling them based on the sample that we're looking at, based on how many things that we're looking at. But in every single situation, there are 0.5 times as many boys as there are girls. So let's look at some small examples. Okay, suppose that a cleaning product needs to be diluted very common. The bottle says to dilute with water in a three parts water to two parts product ratio. Suppose you want to use one cup of the product, how much water should you dilute it with? Okay, so immediately the thing that I get from this paragraph is the ratio three to two, right? Three parts water to two parts product. So you can either write it as the ratio notation, like three to two, or you can write it as a fraction, like three halves. Three halves reduces to 1.5. So I always think about what is my numerator of the fraction, in this case it's H2O, it's water, and then my denominator is product. So when I'm reducing the fraction, when I'm actually figuring out what the decimal is, what that's saying is how many times more water I need, or how many times less, it really depends on, you know, if my, if my ratio was 0.5, like in the last one, then it's, you know, less by a certain amount of times. But here, what we can say from this decimal is that there is 1.5 times as much water as there is product. That's what this decimal represents. So then all I need to do is take the one cup of product that we have. You know, maybe we only have a cup lying around. Maybe there's just, we just have one cup, right? If I put one cup of um, the product in there, you know, how much water should I dilute it with? Uh, well, again, there's 1.5 times as much water as there is product. So if I'm using one cup, I'll just multiply that by 1.5. And that just gives me 1.5 because, you know, we're using one cup. One times anything is just the anything part. So I need 1.5 cups of water to dilute this product with. 
Another way you can visualize this is you could say, oh, look, there's five things total, right? There's three to two. So I did three blue circles to two green circles. The green circle represents the product for which we know we have one cup of, which means that each circle must therefore represent half of a cup because there's two of them, right? Two one halves is the same as one. So each circle must, must represent one half cup of whatever liquid it is that we're using, which means on this other side, each of these are also going to be one half of a cup each. There's three of them, so there's one and a half cups of water in totality. Okay, that's more of like a visual way to, to look at this. All right, example two. Suppose a bead company creates mixed bags of beads using red, black, and gray beads in a one to four to five ratio. If there are 48 black beads in a bag, then how many beads are in the bag in total. So you'll notice right away that this ratio doesn't look like you're comparing two things. It looks like you're comparing three things, and that's fine. You're, you can do that. The ratio one to four to five can be broken up into really two main ratios. You know, I would say kind of the first two that are listed here. One to four is a ratio that we're given, and also four to five is a ratio that's given. But you can also uh, combine the outer pieces as well. So one to five is also a ratio that we get from this. And then of course the reverse of all these. 1 to 4 could be written as 4 to 1, 4, uh, 4 to 5 could be written as 5 to 4, and 1 to 5 could be written as 5 to 1. But anyway, so what I'm going to do is notice that we have actually the number of black beads in this bag, and that's going to help us um, figure out how many red and gray there are using the ratios that, that relate, for instance, red and black. We can use that ratio to find the number of red. So the first ratio here, 1 to 4, just like last time, right? translates to being there's one-fourth the amount of red as there are black beads. One-fourth the amount of red beads as there are black beads. And I know that red goes here because red's in the numerator, right? Red is in the numerator position. So it is a red to black ratio, and that is one-fourth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the known number of black beads that we have, which is 48, and I'm going to just multiply that by one-fourth, or divide by four would be the same thing. And there we go. There's 12 red beads in the bag. I want to also use this last ratio because now that we know the number of red beads, I always like to use the number one when it's in a ratio, um, which is why I did not choose to use the four to five to figure out the number of gray, although we can. Uh, but I like using number one when I can. And uh, we're going to translate this ratio to be there's one fifth the amount of red as there are gray, right? Because we still don't know the amount of gray beads in the bag. But notice that red is the thing that we have. Right? In the first ratio, black is the thing we were given, but red is the thing that we know, we know there's 12 of them in this ratio, and it's not in the position that I want it to be. Like one-fifth the amount of red as there are gray, but we, we don't know how many gray that there are. I need to somehow switch these locations. I need to use the number of red to find the number of gray, whereas the way this is written, you'd need to know the number of gray to figure out the number of red. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reverse the ratio. 5 to 1, which as a fraction is 5 over 1, which means there's 5 times the amount of gray beads as there are red beads. And now I can use this because I know the number of red beads. So I'm just going to take that number and multiply it by 5, and there we go. 12 times 5 is 60, so there must be 60 gray beads. Now for those of you wondering, how could we do this with the 4 black beads to 5 gray beads ratio? Um, I went ahead and I did that here as well. So you don't have to use that last one, the 1 to 5. You could just use the 4 to 5 here. Um, but again, you're going to have to flip some stuff. So the 4 to 5 ratio is um, black beads as the numerator, gray beads as the denominator. So there's 0.8 times the amount of black beads as there are gray beads is the way that that really should be said. 0.8 times should be inserted right there. But again, the thing that we know is black beads. We're trying to find gray beads. The way that this is written assumes we know gray beads and we're trying to find black beads. So I need to flip it. I need to get black into this position over here. And the way to do that is just by flipping the ratio, which of course is going to change the decimal. So there's uh, the 4 to 5 ratio becomes 5 to 4, but now gray is in the numerator. So there's 1.25 times the amount of gray beads as there are black beads. And now I can take the number of black beads, which again is known, 48 times by 1.25, and that will also give me 60. But I still haven't answered the question. It says, how many beads are in the bag? Well, I'll just add all of the beads together. 48 black, 12 red, and 60 gray gives us 120 beads.
So now let's talk about proportion equations. To set this up, we needed to know what ratios were and how they work and how to use them because proportion equations are one way that you can solve ratio type problems. First, the definition. A proportion equation is any equation that's an equality between two equivalent fractions, like A over B is equal to C over D. That's a proportion equation. You have fraction equals fraction, okay? Uh, and like I just said, this is a helpful way to set up equations when you're solving percent and, more importantly, ratio problems. Let's return to example one so I can show you what I mean. If instead of setting this up as finding the uh, decimal, I think we found that there's 1.5 times the amount of water as there is product in this example, just by setting up the ratio three over two, you could instead set up a proportion. So we have the ratio, the same ratio we had before, three parts water to two parts product. We have one cup of product. So I'm gonna make, I'm gonna set this equal to another fraction where we have one cup of product and an unknown amount of water. Okay, that's what my question mark, we're trying to solve for question mark um, in this example. This is the correct way to set up the proportion equation. Notice that you have the H2O unit in the numerator for both fractions and the product unit in the denominator for both fractions. If you were to do something like this, where instead you had three H2O over two product and you set that equal to one product over H2O, notice that we don't have H2O in the numerator. We have product in the numerator. So this is the incorrect way, right, to set that up. You have to have your units be the same. They have to agree with themselves because they're equivalent fractions. So you can always check how you set this up to know how you should set up your second uh, fraction. But again, the reason we're allowed to do this is because these uh, ratios should be equivalent. They need to be equivalent ratios because we're saying that they are. Now I'm just gonna solve for question mark. So I'm gonna multiply by one product. I'm gonna get rid of this denominator here, which is gonna cancel the one product completely. This whole denominator cancels. On the left-hand side, um, notice that it's really just the unit that's canceling. You have a product unit in the numerator, product unit in the denominator, so those are canceling. And so I'm just left with one times three over two on the left, which is, as we already know, 1.5. So I need 1.5 cups of water for this. So again, comparing this, how, you know, how is this different than what we did before? Well, before we didn't set up an equation. We just interpreted this fraction, this ratio, um, as there is 1.5 times as much water as there is product. Okay, and here we actually set up an equation that we could solve. And I think that setting up an equation that you can solve is a little bit more uh, versatile and universal approach to these types of questions because being able to just say, hey, set up your proportion, solve for your unknown variable is a very play-by-play -play way to do this rather than figure out your ratio, you know, figure out what you're given, um, interpret that ratio, and then multiply what's given by that specific decimal that you got. Okay, so let's look at another one. I got two more for you. Uh, let's say that for a field trip, a school requires that there's two adults for every seven kids on this trip. They're chaperones, right? If 30 kids are going on the field trip, how many adults should accompany them? How many adults should be present? Well, I see two adults for every seven kids. That's a ratio. So two adults over seven kids. Uh, keeping in mind that my second ratio needs to also be adults over kids and we know the number of kids, I'm gonna use X as the variable for the unknown amount of adults that should be accompanying these 30 kids. Okay, so I set up my proportion. Now I just solve for X. X is being divided by 30, so I need to multiply by 30. The kids units will cancel on really both sides of the equation. Um, and then I think I'm just gonna actually drop the units of measure now um, because the units of measure agree on both sides. We don't need to write it. And you'll, you'll notice that I multiplied 30 by two, right, to get this 60 here. When you're multiplying a whole number, like 30, by a fraction, like two over seven, it's only the numerator that's get, that gets multiplied. You can think about 30 as a fraction itself, because it is, and when you multiply fractions, you just multiply straight across. So 30 times two is 60, and one times seven is seven. And then I just did that division, and I got um, a decimal. I got 8.2. Uh, I got 8.5 and then a bunch of stuff after that. So I rounded it to 8.57. Now you can't have 8.57 adults. So in the context of this situation, you should probably bring nine, right? Nine adults should go. Last one, 
A scale model of a home is built where one inch in the model represents five feet in the home. If a wall in the model is 1.6 inches tall, then how tall is the wall in the home itself? Now, there's actually two ways that we could go about setting up this proportion. And I guess technically there were two ways you could set up the last example we just did, but we're not presented with the same problem here, so that's why I didn't mention it. So for this one, though, there's two ways that we could go about solving this. The first is just to set it up as it's written, right? We have one inch per five feet. So I did one inch over five feet. We know the model is 1.6 inches, right? The wall of the model is 1.6 inches and we don't know the feet. And the thing that's different about this one over the last one is that the unknown variable is in the denominator. That is not a big deal though. We're just gonna get it out of the denominator. So you notice that I rewrote the equation where I dropped my units just to make it easier to look at. I wanna multiply both sides by X to remove it from the denominator of the right fraction and add it to the numerator, I guess really I should say multiply it, to the numerator of the left fraction. So now I've got this. X over five is equal to 1.6. X is being divided by five, so I multiply both sides by five and I get X is equal to eight feet. Now if you don't like having X in the denominator like this, right, maybe you don't like that extra step of having to multiply by X um, to get it out of the denominator position, then you could just flip the ratios, just, just like we did before, right? When we were doing the one to five, we flipped it to five to one, but keeping in mind that the units themselves are also gonna flip. So you could write the ratio in a, in a flipped version. So notice that now I'm writing it as five feet over one inch. But as long as I flip the second one, it's still fine. So now X feet is in the numerator and 1.6 inches is in the denominator. This one's particularly useful because five divided by one, and here I just rewrote it again without the, uh, without the units, but five divided by one is just five. So I have five is equal to X divided by 1.6. I need to get rid of the 1.6 in the denominator on the right, so I multiplied both sides by 1.6 and I again got eight feet. So both of these methods are fine. I actually find myself uh, wanting to do this more often. I like to have what I'm solving for in the numerator position. But at the end of the day, it's whatever you're comfortable with. And uh, having something in the denominator is really just one extra step. I mean, if you're solving with cross multiplication, it's, it's no extra steps. You just do the cross multiplication. But anyway, we should write a nice uh, concluding remark, right? The wall of the home is eight feet. And that is the end of this problem. Okay, so that's it for this one. Uh, just a few examples on, you know, definitions of ratios and proportions and a few examples on how to use them. If you have any questions, uh, just leave a comment below or shoot me an email. Thanks a ton for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.